I think it would be a good idea to specifically uh, give some examples of electron configurations. And then we're going to see what happens when uh, we make uh, ions from those electron configurations. Uh, I think there's a couple of homework problems that um, will probably be helped by you watching this video. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pick out the neutral electron configuration for two elements. We're going to talk about aluminum and gallium. Uh, these aren't any you know, particularly interesting elements. It just kind of shows the, the patterns in some of this uh, cation and I guess also in the anion formation. But if, we, if you look at that previous video, you should be able to write the electron configuration for aluminum and gallium. And so I'm going to write that below and then we'll consider what happens when we uh, make an ion from those. So here are the electron configurations for both aluminum and gallium. Keep in mind these are ground state electron configurations. Um, if you're interested in excited state uh, electron configurations, uh, it's not very exciting, but you can certainly look in the book and ask me questions about it. But these are the ones we're primarily concerned with. Um, so one of the first things to recognize is that when we specifically talk about ion formation, which we've seen before, we know that the loss of electrons leads to positive charge, right? And as you go on in these videos, you'll start to see that aluminum um, and gallium prefer to have a plus three charge. So I just wanted to write down the electron configurations and uh, of, the, um, of the ions. So here's aluminum three plus, that's fairly straightforward, right? We can see that we lost three electrons, which is why we have the, the excess of uh, positive charge there, three positives. And of course, what we lost were these outermost electrons, which um, we either will or uh, have already talked about as valence electrons, right? That's, so that's not too hard to imagine, right? You just basically start at the far right side and you start hacking off electrons. But if you notice what happened to gallium, it's kind of bizarre because we actually haven't lost the, the outermost electrons in order, right? Well, so certainly we lose this 4p1, but you'll notice those three d's kind of still hang around. And this has to do with the vagaries of um, kind of the of uh, quantum mechanics and things like that. So for now, we're really just going to kind of have to memorize that only... Uh, S and P electrons get lost. And as I said, I think you have a couple of homework questions um, that uh, deal with this. One thing that's true is that um, when you make an ion, sometimes it's helpful to just kind of list the, uh, the principal numbers out in order. In other words, um, write out gallium 3 plus as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p1, right? But um, the only problem with that is, is that if you start to kind of just do everything in order like that, sometimes your electron configurations, you'll kind of trick yourself and um, you won't get them right. So I really recommend um, just kind of memorizing the, fa the fact that um, you lose S and P electrons if you have to do some sort of electron configuration. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask me.